Ada boxes, you've built robots and radios, learned Circuit Python, and played retro games. Now you're ready to learn about the dark arts of electronics. This Ada box is super sneaky, with a secret, spy, and security theme. Everything in this box will teach you stuff they don't want you to know. We wanted to bring you the full experience of being a super hacker spy, but without having to hang upside down from a helicopter or break into Megacore's skyscraper headquarters at 2 a.m. You'll use your brains and hands to solve puzzles, send secret messages, bypass locks, and listen in on the radio waves around you. Then you'll build some electronic projects that will teach you about security while having fun. You'll learn how real hackers and security experts work, and at the same time, how to protect yourself from spying eyes. Adabox 007. Hey, this is John Park for Adafruit, and welcome to the unboxing of Adabox 007. Hopefully you've gotten your box in the mail at this point and you can play along as we check out the contents of this brand new Ada box. We're really excited about this Ada box because it is the spy and security themed 007. Let's take a look at the contents. Ooh, our beautiful 
Adabox itself. I'm gonna take the Adabox out and we can take a look at some of the goodies that come in the box for subscribers. This one is packed, as you can tell. So we had to put some inside of this larger box. First of all, we have the EFF, Electronic Frontier Foundation, supplied sticker set. And we have an issue of Hackspace magazine. Hackspace is an excellent, fairly new magazine that serves the maker and hacker community. It's beautiful, has all kinds of articles in it about making. So check that out. Setting our outer packaging aside, we get to the main event, Adabox 007 itself. So first of all, I'm going to slide the die cut outer packaging off, revealing the beautiful Adafruit logo. And if we pull out the insert, we can take a look at the table of contents of the box. All right, now, instead of reading through the table of contents on this, let's go through them ourselves. I'm gonna open this up and be careful because it is packed. First thing we'll notice is we have a pack in, which is a webcam cover sponsored by DigiKey. So this is pretty cool. You can take this out of its little bag and this will stick in front of your webcam in order to prevent anyone from watching you without your knowledge. Next, let's take a look inside the tissue paper of our Adabox 007. Like I said, it's packed. Be careful, who knows what things might come out as you lift out the inner packaging. So I'm going to take out this enormous bag, but we also have some things that may be off to the side. So double check when you remove the contents of yours. Nothing in there, I'll set that tissue paper aside. But look, inside the box underneath, we have an issue of 2600 Magazine. This is the hacker and phone freaker standby for decades. And you might learn a lot of interesting things about hacking the system inside of 2600. All right, looks like nothing else in this box. So I'm gonna close that up and set it off to the side. And now let's take a look. First of all, right on top in this case, I have the Gemma M0. Now, the Gemma M0 is an M0-based microcontroller that is tiny yet powerful. We have a lot of interesting projects that you'll be making with your Gemma M0. And there it is. This has six connections that you can use wire, screws, and nuts, as we're gonna show you in some of these projects, or alligator clips, which you may have from previous Ada boxes, to connect up to outside sensors, to power things, to use capacitive touch. It's got a lot packed onto this board. And some of the more exciting projects we have involve the fact that this can emulate a USB device. So it can look like a keyboard or a mouse on any computer into which it is plugged. So very interesting implications for security from our little Gemma M0. Now let's dig into the bag some more. I'm gonna shake this out and see what comes out. Nothing hiding in there. Let's set this aside. Uh, now, one thing I wanna point out, right at the bottom here, we have a puzzle. This is the DigiKey sponsored DigiKeyer puzzle. This actually has the circuit board of the original DigiKeyer, which was a kit that was used to send Morse code. So this is kind of a step back into history and you might enjoy putting together that puzzle. Thanks, DigiKey. We also have a tattoo of our good friend, Blinka. We've got a padlock. Let's open this package up. 
I've got a couple of keys. We're not gonna need those. And we have this clear padlock. Now, I'm not gonna bother with the keys, but later we'll take a look at using these lock picks to open it up. This is a really nice pick set that has a couple of tension wrenches, some hook picks, some diamond picks, and even a ripple side wafer pick. What else have we got? Ooh, we have the Bold Port Club stickers. Now, this is a really neat sticker set that you can use to decorate things, and it's got a breadboard and a few different components and wires for you to simulate your favorite small circuit. We have batteries, three triple A's, as well as a battery pack that has an on-off switch and a JST connector to power our Gemma M0. We've also got a little screw that came with that battery pack that can be used to screw the door in place securely. We have some enamel coated magnet wire. This is a very, very thin wire that you can use to create an antenna for one of our projects that involves an AM radio and a Morse code keyer using our Gemma M0. We also have a piezo buzzer. Now this buzzer is gonna come in handy on a lot of projects where we want to make sounds from our Gemma M0. The Gemma M0 doesn't have a speaker built on, but we can use the piezo buzzer instead. Now there are different ways to connect things to the Gemma M0. We've used in the past wires, alligator clips. In this case, we're going to use nuts and screws. So we have these nice little M3 nuts and screws, which are eight millimeters long, just perfect to thread through the Gemma M0's holes and they're electrically conductive. So we can then use the nuts to screw on the leads of things like LEDs or other sensors. Now, we've got a couple things here that go together. This is a UV marking invisible ink pen, and we have an ultraviolet LED. When the LED is powered by the Gemma M0, we will be able to see secret messages that are written with the ultraviolet ink, which is not visible under normal light. That's pretty cool, and we have a nice little project that'll show you how to build that. We also, speaking of light outside of the visual spectrum, have an infrared LED and an infrared receiver. There it is. So we have some projects that show you how to decode infrared signals that are sent by things like remote controls for your TV, as well as a TV Be Gone project with the Gemma that allows you to turn off any television on the planet at the press of a button. The Gemma will run through every known off code for every TV set. Very cool project, kind of sneaky and disruptive. Okay, what else have we got? Ah, there is a potentiometer. This is a 10K potentiometer, which is essentially a resistor that you can change the value of by turning the knob. And we have this nice knob that can go on it and make it a little easier to turn. It just press fits onto here like this. So we have some cool projects that use the potentiometer and knob on the Gemma M0. And again, we have this very cool technique of joining the potentiometer to the board using the screws and nuts. So you'll check that out in the learning guide later. We also have a fast vibration switch. This thing is really cool. It's a tiny little cylinder that has a spring with one lead running out the bottom that we can connect to, and then a central shaft, which is a stiffer piece of metal, also has a lead that we can connect to. And when this thing moves, the spring ever so slightly shakes and makes contact with that center post, which we can detect on the Gemma M0. So we have a project that shows you how to build a motion sensor, which you'll be able to use to detect when someone picks up your stuff and we'll sound the alarm on the piezo buzzer. A very cool little gizmo that is. Ah, this is a 
transistor that's going to be used to boost the signal of our IR LED for the TV Be Gone project. Special pack in just for that project for Adabox 07. Let's see. We are now going to take a look at a couple of other cool things. We have a very short little USB to USB micro cable, and you'll use this to both power and send data to the Gemma M0 for some projects that don't need to use battery. So we have some of these projects I mentioned that involve USB HID. We can make it look to a computer like this is a mouse or a keyboard, and by surreptitiously plugging into the back of a machine, we can get away with some very interesting stuff. So you'll check out the Foul Foul project later, which allows you to execute commands on your target's computer. So there's this nice little USB cable just for that. We also have some conductive fabric. This is a woven, very thin wire fabric, which can be used for a couple of interesting projects. We have a Morse code keyer, which I had mentioned before, and we'll end up using some clothes pins and this fabric to make some little makeshift paddle switches so that we can build a proper Morse code keyer. There's also a project that shows how to use this to wrap up a cell phone and essentially build a Faraday cage, which cuts all radio frequency transmissions going into and out of the phone, which is a very important type of security to consider. You never know who's tracking you. And here we have a software-defined radio dongle. Let's open up the package here. And inside this little bag, we'll find a few things. And the two that really matter to us are this antenna and this little dongle. It also comes with an infrared remote. And we're not going to use that for this SDR, or software-defined radio. But you could use it for detecting IR on your Gemma using the IR receiver that we mentioned before. There's also a CD in here. We're not going to need that. But we do have some tutorials which will show you how to get started with software-defined radio, which allows you to use your computer to decode all kinds of interesting radio transmissions coming across the AM, FM, narrowband, wideband frequencies, including Morse code transmissions, weather radio, and a lot of other interesting stuff. So you'll be able to check all that out using this little RTL SDR dongle and antenna. So these are all the great contents of Adabox 007, the spy box. Let's do a quick recap. We have the Gemma M0, which is going to be central to so many of the projects, from the security-themed USB projects to an AM transmitter for Morse code, to motion detector alarm, all kinds of things that you'll be able to build with your Gemma M0 that are spy and security related. Then we have the machine screws for attaching components. For the components, we have the infrared transmitter, the infrared receiver, as well as a transistor to boost the signal of the IR transmitter when you want to turn off any TV in range. We have the secret UV marking pen and ultraviolet LED. We have the enamel-coated magnet wire and a USB cable for connections. We've got the woven conductive cloth, which can also be a Faraday cage. We now have the vibration sensor, the piezo buzzer, a 10K potentiometer and knob, RTL SDR software-defined radio dongle and antenna. We have the AAA batteries and battery box to power your mobile projects. And we have the clear training padlock and lock pick set. Then, on top of all of that, if that weren't enough, we have all these great pack-ins. So thank you to DigiKey for the addition of the DigiKeyer puzzle, as well as the webcam cover to protect you from spying eyes. Then we have the bold port sticker set for breadboarding and having a lot of fun with circuitry. We have the Blinka tattoo. Packspace Magazine, the EFF sticker set, and 2600 Magazine. Now we'll have a look at some of the many projects that we can build with the contents of Adabox 007. I've prepared some of these projects in advance, but let's take a look at one useful skill, which is bending the leads on our piezo buzzer 
and using the machine screws in order to connect it to the Gemma M0. So first I'm gonna pull off the little tape and cardboard and you, normally you can cut these right at uh, the point where they enter the tape and the cardboard, but we're gonna use the full length of these to wrap around these little posts that we're gonna make. So here we have our piezo and I've got a Gemma M0 here which I've plugged into the battery pack so I've put two screws through on pin D0 and ground, and these screws are facing up here. What I'm gonna do is now gently and carefully bend the legs coming off of the piezo so that they can fit those screws, and then we'll screw them down with nuts to secure them. So I can just use my finger to gently bend that down. You don't wanna pry these back and forth because you'll break them off, but just like that, will work well. Now, if we look at the Gemma, we could fit it pretty well right there and screw them down, or you can loop these around something a little bit so that they connect to the screw better. So you could grab one of the screws uh, itself, we have a nice little pack of them, and bend it around this, or you can use a little set of needle nose pliers, whoops, like so, and like this, and just to hook those around the screws a bit. And now, when I set them on top of those two screws, I can grab a couple of these nuts to fit onto the posts. And these can be a little bit tricky because you gotta have three hands to do it. So you might get someone to help you if you have any problems with it, but not too bad. And you can just finger tighten those or you could use a small socket if you want. And now I'm gonna set this around the other screw, take a nut, and screw that on there like so. And this will both mechanically connect the piezo to your Gemma so it stays put, and make the electrical connection that we'll need to drive this little piezo. Okay, once I've got those on there securely, uh, this one has been programmed with our Noyatron, which is set to play a little melody every so often, so you can hide it somewhere and people will wonder, where's that sound coming from? So let's test it out. There's a familiar phone ringer. And another one. Rick rolled. Good one. Little crickets. So this is set to a demo mode where it's gonna play everything in software. And then you can go in and set it to just the one you want and the interval. So something like a half hour or just a couple times a day. It really drives someone mad. So that's one project that you can do with the piezo and the Gemma and the battery pack. Hide that away somewhere. Now let's take a look at uh, another project. This is the phone pouch that I built using our conductive fabric and a sewing machine. So this happens to fit my fairly old school iPhone SE very nicely. And now that it's in there, it has lost all communication to the outside world. So no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no cell phone connection, all of that died the moment it went in this pouch and we closed the flap over. Another one of our projects is called the Foul Foul. Now I've taken a Gemma M0 and I've put it inside of a small length of heat shrink tubing and carefully heated this up so that it's a little bit more of a discrete package and I can connect it to our little six inch USB to USB micro cable and plug it into a target computer. What it's programmed to do right now is to run a terminal program which will download an image, change the user's backdrop, and send a little message to them that they need to mind their security a little bit better. Here we've got a project using the vibration sensor and a piezo buzzer. So you can see here if it gets disturbed, it's gonna let out an alarm. Now these are just some of the projects that you can build using the contents of Adabox 007. 
Check out the Learn Guide for lots more projects and ideas of where to go from here. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and this has been the Adabox 007 Unboxing. Aha, there we go. Let me put that thing on mute there. Okay, sorry about that. I just said the most important things probably I'll ever say in my life, and I'm very sorry that those of you who don't read lips missed them. Uh, but thank you for people in the chat from uh, alerting me. <laughs> yeah, no audio, drat. Uh, so I think, I think our audio is good now, so let's do a check. Yeah, so what I was saying is this is the really live, live part uh, when I screw up audio and things like that. So uh, anyway, thank you for stopping in to watch the unboxing. Uh, I hope you are as excited as we are about Adabox 007. Um, and let's see, I wanted to, uh, since, since we have a chance here, here in my workshop, I wanted to show you uh, a couple of other little demos real quick. So let me switch over to the workbench cam and this down shooter over here. Step around the side. So first thing is we've got, I mentioned this, uh, this lock we've got, this clear lock. So this thing is really, really cool. Uh, it's an acrylic lock and then the cylinder and uh, pins and springs, they're all real and normal. But if you want an idea of how the lock really works, actually, I don't, I have to pick it first because I, I left the keys on there. So I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to pop this over to the other camera here. And let me zoom that in real close like. I'll give you a web, a workbench cam there. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to just pick it first. So let's actually get this hook pick out. And whoops, we have some nice close up um, picking videos that you'll see on the learning guide. And we're going to take a look at the learning guide in a second too, because we have tons and tons of great tutorials for you. Uh, let's see. It's always dangerous to say you're going to pick a lock on camera and then you have to deliver the goods, and what have you. Can't quite see it, which you shouldn't have to, but it's really good when you're learning to be able to see. Oh, here we go. Last pin. Is it this guy? Let me try to get that more in the camera. There we go. It was that first pin. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this to the camera and you can see as I Pop that open and this will unlatch. So now that I've got it open, here's what I wanted to show you in the first place, which is let me switch back over to this cam here and let's go and focus. Okay, so if you watch the uh, brass pins, which are under these silver springs, they're gonna all jump up into position as this key goes in. And you'll notice each pin is two parts. So when the driver pin, which is the top, gets above what's called the shear line, then that cylinder is free to turn. Uh, and so we've also got some videos uh, to accompany the guide uh, that show me using my big giant um, demonstration lock that I built. Here's the giant key. Um, so I think that hopefully this will help you to sort of um, visualize how the, like, the locks work and that helps you in picking them. So excited about the picking stuff and I've seen a lot of people on social media have been excited as well and are starting to play around with and, and uh, learn to open locks or get back into it if they've done it before but haven't done it in a while. Um, I also wanted to show off my double Blinka tattoos. Yeah. 
So there you are. Double blanket tattoos. How about that? Uh, never mind these injuries. I do circus stuff and I tear my wrists up. So uh, the Blink is our, our Circuit Python mascot, and uh, we're very excited to be able to offer this really nice, high-quality temporary tattoo. Uh, it is temporary. Those aren't permanent that I have. Uh, let's see. So a couple of other projects I wanted to show. So I mentioned in the video this. Actually, let me, let me, this is a good one for this little camera here. Uh, this is... Oh, you can do it. There's the autofocus. This is how I mounted this um, potentiometer to the Gemma using our machine screws. So you can see the center uh, leg from the potentiometer is just running through the middle hole and has contact with it just by force of the other two screws. And then these legs are right here, screwed down nice and tight with the machine screws, which means that they're uh, connected electrically as well as mechanically. And now we have this sort of nice, stable, sturdy little package that you can plug in your USB cable. And then with the software project that we have for the radio tuning knob, depending on the SDR software you're using, you can tune your radio using this cool little knob. And that's just the start of the kinds of things that you can do once you can send keystroke commands to your computer over USB. So a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. Um, let's see. What else did I want to show you? Let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to hop back over to my machine here for a second, and we'll take a brief look at the guide. So let me pop over to this camera here. Hello again. Let me find my browser window. I'll click on anything. All right. So this is the Adabox 007 guide, and this one is just chock full of projects. So not only do we have a ton of stuff that came with this box, as you can see from our video earlier, we also have a lot of projects. So we've just done the unboxing. We'll skip that. Here's the lockpick primer, a uh, picture of our lock and our picks. And here's some of these videos I talked about that'll help get you started. And then there are also some links in here to some great um, tutorial guides from Tool, the open organization of lock picking. They've done a really nice job in educating people at things like maker fairs, and they also have a great um, slideshow or, or PowerPoint presentation that you can download that'll go into depth on picking pin tumbler locks. Um, the anti-surveillance phone pouch you've seen, and there's, there's mine. Uh, there it is. I've got it right right here. And someone had asked about, um, so here's my phone going in. Someone had asked about, hey, why can't you just put your phone into airplane mode? Well, the idea behind this is that we're not really um, certain that the manufacturers of the phone and the operating system or the cell phone are doing what they say they're doing when we think we've turned the radios off. So um, short of making your own open source uh, Snowden, Bunny Wong, cell phone that you know how everything on it works and everything the software does, this is the best way to at least temporarily stop your phone from receiving any data or, or sending out any data um, that can be used for location. So uh, if you're a protester going to an event, uh, this is an example of a case where people don't want to necessarily turn the phone all the way off, if that really turns it off, um, and they just want to be able to pop it out and use it when they want to use it and put it back away. So that's the idea there um, behind the Faraday cage phone pouch. So check that one out. Uh, this hidden uh, message one worked out really nicely. I was uh, so impressed with this invisible ink pen that we got. You can't see the writing at all. It doesn't leave any kind of sheen. It's, it's really invisible, especially if you write. You can see I wrote on top of one of the tools in our little uh, tool journal. Uh, that we have the coloring book uh, tool journal in the Adafruit store. Uh, and then using the UV LED, which is uh, sometimes also called a black light, we can go, uh, here, I'll play this one here. We can go ahead and see the message show up. Now, this looked really cool on video. Uh, the colors are way more saturated on video than they were in real life. Uh, so don't expect to see exactly that, but it's very impressive. Oh, here we get an ad. Uh, it's very impressive what the... Um, message looks like when you reveal it using your UV light. So check out that one. And let me pop, 
pop back to the guide here for a second. So uh, we have our SDR tuning. And so if you're new to this, SDR, I mentioned uh, a moment ago, is software-defined radio. And it's wild some of the things that you can listen to just by um, demodulating with software things that normally you'd need other uh, gear, uh, uh, analog gear to, to uh, demodulate. So instead of having lots and lots of different radios that are used for different purposes, you can use software, which is uh, wild and our little... SDR RTL dongle. Uh, let's see, we've got the password vault. So this is uh, a use of the Gemma to uh, give passwords up to your machine over USB. So when you touch one button, it can type in an entire phrase. I built on my live stream a little hidden version of it inside of this Tiki. So if you look inside of, uh, whoop, hey, here we have a Gemma embedded, and then I'm using a little bit of copper tape to act as a capacitive touch antenna. And this will work when I just touch his teeth here, it doesn't even need to be a contact with, with the metal strip because it's just acting like a capacitive antenna. That's our password vault project. Uh, Annoyomatic, you saw, and uh, I showed you that a second ago, but one thing that I did on this one, and it shows you how to do this in the guide, is I attached a rare earth magnet here. So you can probably see, there it is, stuck to the side of my workbench. Oops, my Gemma popped off. Uh, but the idea would be to hide it under somewhere like that. In fact, let's turn it on and we'll hear some of the lovely little songs coming through our piezo. And there's another case of using the machine screws to attach something. So there we go. So here, let's put this under here and we'll be annoyed by that. All right, that, that one's the doorbell one. That one gets me every time. Uh, oh, that's really annoying. I gotta turn that off. I'm really dying to use this on my son. I haven't yet, but... Uh, I think it's going to be fun. So, so the idea is you want those to be very intermittent. You don't want them to run too often because then it's easier to find. So uh, the Annoyomatic, check it out. The uh, Foul Foul, I mentioned this is our keystroke injection attack, um, which you can really get yourself into a lot of trouble with it. So be careful. But it also is a great way to show uh, how important it is to know what it is you're plugging into your computer. If you pick up a thumb drive and stick it in your machine, you might as well have just asked for a rootkit to be put on. So um, it's an interesting project, I think, for, for uh, security reasons. Same with the Phantom Mouse Jiggler. This one, when you plug in, will give us a little um, mouse jiggle. Let's see, do I have the video showing this? USB mouse jiggler. Here's the screen. Okay, so if you watch on the screen here, here I am trying to work. I'm trying to type in something on the calculator, and then whoa, the mouse starts wiggling and jiggling as if a phantom has taken possession. Uh, in fact, if Joe Bowers is watching, this is a friend of mine. He got me one time years ago, and I've been meaning to get him back. He actually did this with a physical mouse. He took the mouse ball out, and he attached a little pager motor to uh, one of the wheels that spins in front of a rotary encoder. And so every time I used my mouse, the cursor just zipped off to the side of the screen, and it took me about 10 minutes to figure out what the heck was going on, so maybe it's time to get Joe back. Um, let's see, uh, the AM radio Morse code paddle we showed you, and I was really excited about this use of the, let me play this for you, this use, let's see if you can get that sound, I'm not sure if it's going to show the sound, of the um, same material that I made the Faraday cage out of is actually it's so conductive, it makes a great contact switch. So I put it on the ends of my, whoops, I put it on the ends of my uh, clothespin to close the contacts when we move that. And let's see, there's so many more. I won't go through them all. Uh, in fact, I am gonna do a special um, Wednesday night version of my show tomorrow. So John Park's workshop will be tomorrow night and we'll go over some more of these projects in more depth because there's too many to go through right here and right now. Uh, and so Ask an Engineer won't be happening tomorrow night. Uh, Phil and Lady Ada had to do something else. So I'm going to take that uh, opportunity to show you some more things from Adabox 007. So check that out tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Same uh, YouTube same Periscope, same Facebook, same Twitch, anywhere you're tuning in, we'll be there. Uh, let's see. So I think that wraps up what I wanted to show you. So we are in the chats. Uh, I believe Lady Ada and Mr. Lady Ada are over in Discord. So if you want to uh, head on over to our Discord channel, let me close this here, you can 
ask questions about Adabox. And I'm going to scale this up for you. Let's see, can I do that from here? Uh, one, one second. I'm juggling a lot of screens. All right, I'm going to scale it up in the software. Here we go. Whoop. How's that? That might be readable. Uh, and we also have people over in the YouTube chat. So those are the two that we're uh, checking out the most. Uh, so I'm curious who's gotten their Ada boxes, show of hands, and uh, what projects have you done already? Um, okay, so we have a question from Mr. Certainly, and this is a good one. I've wondered this. Uh, he says that uh, he's misplaced a few of the colored inserts that come with past Ada boxes. So this is the insert sheet. And it has uh, the story of the box. It has all of the contents listed. And it has some links to some URLs uh, related to the box at the bottom. And I'm hoping that uh, if Lady Ada or PT know the answer to that, they can uh, chime in. If not, it seems like it would be a great idea for us to um, make those available as a PDF or something. But uh, we'll see. So we'll, we'll try to get that answered for you. Um, Maybe for a few folks, if you're a cool helper and are nice, yes. All right, so it sounds like you're going to get your, your wish fulfilled on this. Uh, one thing I also wanted to mention is if you've received your Adabox 007, in the insert, it mentions that you can use an exclusive 10% off discount coupon code in the Adafruit store. And that coupon code has already been, uh, as if by magic, added to your account or the account that was used to purchase your Ada box. In case someone got that for you as a gift, you might want to talk to them about that. So uh, exclusive coupon code. It's not just a code I can tell you because it's one per person and it's, it's exclusive to you. So if you're looking to add some more things to your uh, workshop, head on over to the Adafruit store and check out all the good stuff. Uh, let's see. What else? Other questions? Ah, so... Kayla in the Discord chat says that their roommate and they have been having a blast practice picking the lock. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, oh, good, good. Dan Mitchell got the lock open in about 10 minutes. No video. So just, just looking at how that works. I think that's a really helpful thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got my puzzle put together. So, so let's take a look at that. I'm going to head over back over to the workshop uh, camera, workbench cam. Let's see. That one is way zoomed in, but let me clear this layer here and head on over here. So this is super cool. Check this out. This is our very exclusive, I'm going to move some stuff out of the way. Watch out, lots and lots of stuff. You know what's fun is to play this video in reverse later. I like messing up neat stuff and then watching it in reverse. So check it out. This is the original DigiKeyer. So um, it was actually a bit of a coincidence that I built the Morse code keyer for this Ada box. And then it turns out we have this photo from the original DigiKeyer, which I can't remember the history behind it. Maybe someone in the chat does. I think it might have been, oh, here it says 1972. Um, or uh, 68. Okay, so 68 was when the founder of DigiKey built this kit that was a Morse code keyer for use by ham radio people. Uh, and I believe in, in uh, I looked at some of the history of this and I believe it used these uh, for timing, these chips for timing so that you could get the um, auto repeat on your dashes similar to the way that I've done it in the software on the Gemma so that if you want to do dot, 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 you can hold that paddle in that direction and it'll do the, the dit length, the dit spacing, the dit length over and over again until you release it, which is a, especially when you're beginning in Morse code, a way to get your timings right without having to manually uh, press that each time. So there's the puzzle. And when it comes in the, in the package, it is actually mostly assembled. It's in four pieces. So close your eyes and take it apart and mess it up before you try to put it together or have someone to do that for you. Uh, so there's our DigiKeyer puzzle. Very cool. And thank you, thank you again for DigiKey. Uh, also, again, I want to show off. I love these. These are adorable. These little uh, bold port stickers that are in this pack. You can peel these off here. I'll do one right now. And let's take the giant capacitor. And you can decide where that's going on your board to build your circuit. Super cool. I kind of want that on a t-shirt. So 
let's see. I think that covers all the stuff here. It's uh, up to you now to dig in and play with your stuff. Also, by the way, I believe there is going to be a giveaway from DigiKey for people who post with the puzzle. Um, in fact, it says it on here. Let me double check this because you can win some good stuff. It says that uh, when you have finished your puzzle, you can share that on Twitter using the hashtag make with DigiKey for your chance to win an Adafruit feather and 20 feather wings. Holy cow. Uh, go do your puzzle and post that up on Twitter. That's a good prize. All right. Um, so I think that about wraps it up. We want to keep this uh, at about 45 minutes, and we're about to hit, hit that 45-minute mark, I believe. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. And come on by tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time to take a little uh, look in some more depth at some of these projects. So I am John Park for Adafruit Industries, and this has been Adabox 007 Unboxing. Bye, everyone.